Hello everyone, Vixer here and welcome to the week 5 recap for A Tale in the Desert, tale number 8. This video will cover everything from midday Friday, April 6th until midday April Friday the 13th. As per the usual, today's agenda is up on the screen, and of course there will be timestamps down in the description below if you'd like to jump to a specific section. Cutoff for these videos is 5pm UTC on Fridays, so some info may be outdated by the time the video goes live. And lastly, I am a member of Hyksos and therefore my info for Kush and Meshwish can be off. Verify anything before you make any decisions based on this video, please. Alright, so before we get into research, I should address the major change that has come to unlocking it. So technology has been getting unlocked at a crazy pace here in Tale 8, and we were starting to see a pretty large divide between Kush and Meshwish as far as um, access to tech. And the devs wanted to slow down the rate of unlocked techs while also putting in a catch-up mechanism to bring more parity among the three factions. The way it works now is that all tech is on a seven-day timer. Now this is a major change. Before, techs had various timers, some as short as a few hours or one day. It's seven days across the board now. And now I'll go over the new catch-up mechanism. So let's say Kush puts entomology on timer. It starts at seven days. If Hyksos then puts it on timer, they too will have seven days until it unlocks. However, if they wait until Kush has entomology off timer and fully unlocked, they will instead have a four day timer. On top of that, if Meshwish comes along being the third faction, and also puts Entomology on timer, after Kush's is off timer unlocked, then Meshwesh will see just a one day timer on that same technology. So long story short, the catch up mechanism doesn't kick in until the first faction has that technology completely unlocked. So these changes hopefully will address both the pace and parity of technology among the factions. The unintended consequences, or perhaps intended, would be that there is now a bit of strategy to unlocking techs. If Kush's entomology timer has only two days remaining, it would benefit Hyksos to actually delay completing their tech until Kush's is unlocked. And to close this out, these are intended to be real life days and not duck time. As far as I know, this has not been coded completely at the time of this video, but the plan is to get it done ASAP. Alright, now that we have the research changes out of the way, we can go over what was unlocked during the week. Now it's going to be difficult for me to pinpoint when stuff comes off timer. I'll be using the wiki to get this info, so if you want my videos to be accurate, you're going to need to make sure that the wiki is accurate. Because I don't know in advance when my video will go live, for now I'll just be putting the date in which the tech comes off timer. But these changes do present a little bit of a problem for me. As I go down my research list, I like to give a brief description of what the tech does or what it introduces. Presenting this info is ideal while the tech is on timer, so you can properly prepare for it to be unlocked. However, because it is on timer and not unlocked, I can't get any footage of the tech being used. So I need to figure out how to get around the issue of talking about these techs without being able to show them. All right, let's go straight to the text then. We'll start with the unlock text. And of course, keep in mind that the dark green represents this week's unlocks. There aren't too many this week because of the new slowdown mechanism. Additionally, there is some sort of bug where the new slowdown mechanism has affected text that were already on timer when it was implemented. This was completely unintended and I believe the devs are trying to fix that, but I don't know of any ETA. Of course, this has greatly affected the Meshwesh in particular and has acted as some sort of super slow down mechanism for them. So because this has not been fixed, take all timers that you're going to see here with a grain of salt. Alright, one of the new techs on timer is the science of color. This will let us build a pigment laboratory where we can make paints. Paints are used in many different buildings and research. Uh, a notable upcoming one would be the beetle statues that are required to participate in the test of Kefri's children. We got hive optimization coming out. This can be used to adjust the hive output, such as setting the beeswax at three times the output at the cost of not producing any honey, for example. Moving on to fine casting. This will give us more options when using the casting box, such as bearings, 
washers, uh, bolts, and smaller gears. Many of these are required in a variety of buildings, such as Rayleigh ovens, uh, brick machines, flax gins, a lot of automated machines. The one we'll probably see first is the pottery deck. Advanced Chemistry 1 is needed to create a crematory, which is a more efficient method to produce lime and ash. There are two bottlenecks, however. You need Advanced Metallurgy, which the faction seem to be working on right now, and you need Rayleigh tiles, which we just can't do yet. Neutralization is on timer. You construct an acid bath to make salts of metal, which are used in pyrotechnics and down the line tools to automate things like charcoal production and limestone extraction. Enomology, of course, unlocks the beetle terrarium so we can start breeding our bugs. Papyrus paper fabrication is on timer in Kush. You can build a paper press to make papyrus paper. And paper can be used in a variety of buildings, such as a malting tray for beer. It's used in a variety of tests, such as the Pulse of the People, and it's used in many tuitions, such as ecology. And of course, that paves the way for paper currency. Advanced Animal Husbandry will let us create a pox cure using our kitchens. Wheat cultivation introduces wheat, of course, which can be grown like flax or barley. It's used in cooking and in beer. And finally, Advanced Metallurgy 2. This introduces moon steel and sun steel. These are alloys that will be needed to construct gyration cells and crematories. Uh, a gyration cell is a much more efficient furnace, and I mentioned the crematory earlier in this video. Moving on to the change log. We've got one welcomed fix, which would be ranches. They should be working as intended now. And we have a big change that's not fully implemented yet, but that may be by the time this video goes up, and that would be ecology. Now, the mechanic itself is not changing but Mallard is making it easier for us to understand how it works. First change is that the levels required in order to learn each of the skills are being reduced. I'll put those on screen. They're as small as three and the highest is only 15. Level five will now need sulfur water instead of insects and level seven needs copper wire and not metal blue wire. We will be able to create an ecology kit at an advanced chem lab. These will let you probe a 500 by 500 area for a total of two minutes. This kit is going to show you colors, but it's not gonna tell you what those colors mean. It just kind of points you in the direction on where you need to do your tests. And we need to keep in mind the time of day and the lighting because they will change the hues of the colors. Of course, none of this is implemented at the time I'm doing this video. These things can always change somewhat or by a lot. So look for these sometime on Saturday. All right, let's move on to tests. We have two new tests this week. First up, test of the vigil. A sacrificial bonfire must be built. It receives visions and requires sacrifices of a wide variety of resources, like flax, catfish, nail molds, uh, papyrus, tons of things. So the requests for sacrifice start at about 15 duck minutes apart but they increase in frequency over time and they can get as frequent as one minute apart. So because of this, vigils are often community-wide or even server-wide. Your score during a vigil is the quantity of sacrifice you made times the total number of sacrifices the vigil has seen. So to make it easy, if you made 10 sacrifices and the vigil saw 800, your score would be 8,000 when the vigil ends. And then that goes towards your, like, your permanent score. And in the past, the Vigil Passes were run during the normal weekly passes, and that probably isn't going to change. The Test of Astrological Alignment. A pair of people perform a ritual at a common altar, requiring two candles each. The altar will say you are aligned or not aligned. You pass the test once you are in a group of five people who are aligned with each other individually. While that sounds not too bad, it's a little bit more difficult in practice. So you may not have heard, but the Great Hall was bugged as far as petitioning it for a new elder election. That bug has since been fixed, so if you have not done so, go over there and petition for a new election. The Great Hall needs 10% of active players within the faction in order to trigger a new election. So 
So you may have seen that the test of the Takascot was unlocked, and you may have absolutely no idea what the hell a Takascot is. Luckily, I made a little how-to video on how to play Takascot. There'll be a link at the end of this video and also one down in the description if you would like to go learn how to play Takascot. And here are some quick notes on some of the previous tests that we have unlocked. Let's talk about region changes. It was pretty exciting this week. The switchover happened a lot earlier than it did in previous weeks, and this caught Hyksos by surprise. They were not only the hardest hit, but they were the only ones hit by this change. They lost seven total regions, while Kush and Meshwesh didn't lose any at all. They were able to gain one region though, while Kush gained six and Meshwesh gained four. And for total region distribution by faction, Hyksos is at 9, which is their lowest point so far this tale. Kush has 19 regions, which is not only their highest point, it tops the previous record for this tale of 18 set previously by Hyksos. And Meshwesh ended up with 13 regions this week. Remember how 3 regions had bonuses last week? Well, at least 19 of them have bonuses this week. I say at least 19 because I don't have all the data for all regions at the time of this video. So there may be more out there that are not listed here. And I'm going to play you guys some pretty music while I leave this list up before we go to the next section. We do have a new official event for the weekend. The Medic Request is a foraging event seen in four parts over Saturday and Sunday. I'll put the times and whatnot on the screen. Rewards will be given during each part to those who find the most of a specific herb, most types of herbs, and the most Devons. Winners will receive prizes ranging from a token of Ra to lily bulbs, herbing baskets, linen, bat mites, rose mites, among several others. And there's an Acro Party on Saturday over in Bernke at the Sharowin Acro Field. Times are 5 p.m. UTC, which is 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time.
So I'm sure most of you have noticed that your veggie yields have gone up six veggies per seed. This is because there are six temples of the fertile land standing down in Kush right now. This is all fun and exciting. Everybody's enjoying their veggie yield. However, if you go down there and you click on one of the pyramids, they have some sort of power meter. All of the meters appear to be the same, which to me suggests that it was added after these were built. Since their building was staggered, one would assume that the power meters would probably also be staggered. Who knows? Maybe not. It is just unknown what these meters do right now. Perhaps when the meter depletes, we lost that pyramid's boost. Do we replenish it? I mean, can we replenish it? Is it going to require us to build new temples of the fertile land? We don't know. So that's something we need to investigate and perhaps we'll learn a little bit more the next level of temple that we put up. I have a new public guild for you guys. The BFG is an all Egypt conversational channel. I'll put the coordinates and the map location, the nearest CS and all that up on the screen. So this guild has already built to its maximum size. And entry into this guild is absolutely free. So head on down there if you'd like to get into a channel that crosses all three factions. So the census shows that we lost players for the first time in Tale 8. Normally this is something you would expect in week 5 because of the first month's billing. But from what I understand, there was some kind of a billing error, so these all happened this past week instead of the previous week. So that concludes this week's recap. I'd like to thank everybody who's helped me out and sent me screenshots and whatnot and information to help get these videos up ASAP. I really appreciate it. It does save me a lot of time. And I'll see everybody next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.